Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 11. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Today is Easter, the most unusual Easter in a lifetime the most sacred day of the Christian calendar, and we cannot gather for worship. We cannot touch each other. Even a small group of 10 or less cannot get any closer than six feet. The music of Easter, the special music, will not be sung by majestic choirs anywhere this year. The pageantry of processionals and liturgical dance will not be seen. From Vatican Square to urban storefronts to suburban multi-campus worship centers to the rural traditional church, there will be a shared experience of empty space on this Easter Sunday. Six weeks ago, we could hardly imagine an Easter Sunday like this. Oh, but life has changed, unimaginably changed. A mere four months and the world economy has come grinding to a halt. Entire sports and entertainment industry has ceased to exist. The hospitality and travel industry is severely crippled. 16 million Americans filed unemployment in the last three weeks. And we know that is a, that's an undercount because people cannot get through on phone lines. Leadership, political leadership, that so many felt in 2016 would surely rise to the occasion to handle any crisis, has failed this country so miserably that it has demonstrated incompetence. Our world is much more globally connected than we thought and much more fragile than we imagined. The air swirls with questions. How long is this going to last, this shutdown? How will we have enough test kits? Will there be enough equipment? We're running out of ventilators. Will hospitals be overwhelmed? How will ordinary folks make ends meet? Uh, who's the blame for this? Why is this happening? There are a myriad of questions swirling around in our minds and on our television sets. On this day, Easter Sunday. For the Christian church, there is one question that rises in priority. It is a question raised on the very first Easter. It was asked to a group of women, a small group who had come to a graveyard to finish a burial ritual that they had to leave incomplete because they ran out of time. They came early on the Sunday morning so they could finish it quickly and not be seen. They came in a group for safety. Just two days earlier, their leader, whom they called Rabboni, teacher, and they revered him as a holy man. Their own people had convicted him as a heretic. And the Roman state saw him as a threat. He was tried in a court so corrupt that even the Roman regional governor knew he was innocent. But because of political pressure, gave in to a state-sponsored lynching. These were dangerous times, so they pressed on early in the morning in a group, this group of women. When arriving at the tomb, 
They found it open and empty. They were puzzled. And then suddenly two men, dazzling clothes, messengers from, from a place where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary find rest. They were not of this world. They were from a place where unquestioning the will of God was always carried out. And these angels asked these women a question of utmost importance. Why do you seek the living among the dead? That question is for us this morning of highest priority. Why do we seek the living among the dead? The angel's question was meant to wake these women up, to jar their memory, to, that a new reality was, uh, that had already been spoken about was, was, was now present. It's a question to wake us up. Many states have said we must shelter in place. They're on lockdown. And the response of some of the Christian community has been in defiance, think, thinking that they prove their Christian witness by continuing to have service. Why are they so interested in dead things? Wake up. Don't you remember? Long ago, 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, uh, it was written down then, if in times of famine or pestilence, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. All they had to do was look in the direction of the temple. They did not have to gather. There are those this morning who would love to meet in grand gathering and see that as the only way that they can truly worship. Wake up. Why do you sleep the living among dead things? Don't you remember he said where two or three are gathered together? I am in the midst. On this day, I'm speaking to the Christian church. Why are you still putting your trust in princes? Wake up. We serve a living God. Why are you trying to gain the whole world and forget about losing your soul? Wake up. Why are you ignoring the Lord's close, closest brothers and sisters? Uh, who are they? They are the least of these, my brothers, my sisters. Wake up. Christian church, those who are believers, why we serve a living God. Why are we so troubled? Why do we faint so easily? Don't you remember? He said in his word, have you not seen? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he, our God, who sits above the circle of the earth, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and make rulers of the earth as nothing. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even the youths will faint. Even the youths get coronavirus. Even the youths shall be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, the living God, shall renew their strength. They shall man up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why are you fearful of the future? He said when he gets stepped out on resurrection ground with all power in his hands and sent his disciples to go into all the world that I am with you and I will be with you through all things even until the end of the age. No matter what change happens in this world, I'm with you. No matter what you face, I am with you. No matter what you go through, I am with you. In sickness and in health, I am with you. We have no need to fear the future. 
our God, the great I am, is present and is with us. And as we gather virtually, he is everywhere at the same time. What is going to happen from here on out? We don't know, but our God is with us. There's a hymn, it's an old hymn. It was written in 1914. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future. For I know what Jesus said, and today I'll, uh, I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Church, wake up. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Let's just hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Let us pray. On this day when we remember the resurrection, when we remember the angels speaking to the women, speaking to us this morning, jarring our memories that he is alive, he is not dead and that you are with us through all things. Guide our feet, guide our actions, guide our thoughts, so that truly people who see us and see the way we interact and love one another and reach out to one another and are not worried in the midst of this pandemic will know that there is a living God. Keep us, Lord, ever faithful so that when we do come to the end of our journey, and we see you face to face, you'll simply say, well done, good and faithful servant. In the name of him who died on Calvary's cross, was put in a borrowed tomb, but did not stay dead, rose on that third day morning with all power in his hand. In his name we pray, amen. This Easter Sunday, we are united together in a virtual service by technology. What really unites us is our love and care for each other. And most of all, it is God's love and care for us that he sent his only son, Jesus the Christ, that he might die on Calvary's cross so that we might live and have life abundantly and everlasting. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus sat with his disciples, and we remember that night on Monday, Thursday. He instituted what we call the Lord's Supper, communion. And he said, do this often. And as often as you do it, remember my death, my suffering, but also my resurrection. We celebrate the resurrection. And so in that celebration and symbolically uniting together, we are holding a virtual communion service. As we prepare, and as you prepare, courtesy of the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee, we have a special music video. Uh, that music video was played at the commemor commemoration service of uh, the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, on this past April 4th. After this music video plays, we will then enter into our virtual communion service. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead, lead me home. Just 
welcome you to this uh, virtual communion service. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus sat with his disciples. He shared with them that he earnestly desired to have this Last Supper with them. Therefore, we get the name the Last Supper. He instituted this. He sat with his disciples and took bread and gave thanks, broke it and passed it to them saying that this is my body which is broken for you. 
and following the bread, he took the cup and raised it to heaven, gave thanks and passed it to them and bid them drink of this, for this cup represents my blood, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. We ask now that uh, you prepare and we pray together. Let us pray. Most gracious God, on this resurrection day, we join together across the miles. We join together remembering that you paid an awful price that we might live. Horrendous torture and suffering, a death. But then on the third day, you rose again. Lord, we ask that as we partake of these elements that you will Take this which represents that broken body and that which represents that shed blood. Change it from temporal to spiritual, that as we partake, we might be strengthened. As we partake, Lord, that we might remember that you are with us always and that you are alive. And you will walk with us and talk with us and see us through everything. Anything that the future holds is in your hand. And we are in the midst, in the very palm and center of your hand. Hear our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In taking this which represents his broken body, Remembering his suffering and his death, eat ye all of it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And after supper, he took the cup. Remembering that blood shed on Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins, drink ye all of it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's recorded in Matthew's Gospel that there was no benediction prayer on that day. They sang a hymn together and then they went out. Were we together on this day where we could see each other and touch each other, we would surely sing a hymn of gratitude. I pray that you will sing a hymn in your hearts and that as you go from this Easter Sunday into next week, into the week thereafter, and the days that are to come, that there will be a song in your heart. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. May his grace and may his peace and his love rest, rule, and abide with each of you this day and all days to come. Amen. <laughs>